So module one first starts off with um, looking a bit at cell structure. So cell structure pretty much comes under the inquiry question of what distinguishes one cell from the other? Now, cell structure um, has evolved a lot. So you um, have different theories around it, um, but ultimately it's come down to cell theory. Um, cell theory pretty much just says that everything's made up, not everything, sorry, all living things are made up of cells. Cells are pretty much like the unit blocks um, and the main basic structural form for organisms. And then all cells come from pre-existing cells. So that relates to um, things such as mitosis as well as meiosis. Within cell structure, you also look at different categories of cell structure. So um, in this case, we look at eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells. So this pretty much just relates to the organelles present within um, the cell. So just like how the human body has organs, cells have organelles with them, when, uh, I can't speak today, um, within them. So these little mini blocks actually help um, with the functioning of the cell and they do play a large role. Um, and I'll explore the different functions of each of these um, organelles over here later on. In essence, what um, eukaryotic cells are, are cells that have a nuclear membrane and membrane-bound organelles. That means within an organelle, you have a membrane enclosing it. And you can see that in the nucleus over here. You have a nucleus because the nucleus is actually surrounded by a membrane. Um, and examples of eukaryotic um, organisms are both plants and animals, so we're eukaryotic um, organisms. Um, and alongside that, you have pretty much the opposite. So that's prokaryotic. Prokaryotic cells do not have any membrane-bound organelles. And you can see over here that you actually don't even have a nucleus. Um, and that's because nucleus is a membrane-bound organelle. Instead, in prokary uh, prokaryotic organisms like bacteria, you um, tend to just have your um, DNA pretty much floating around in something called a nucleoid. So it's like similar to a nucleus, but not exactly um, a nucleus. Um, and one thing to note is that due to like the lack of a um, membrane bound organelle, um, prokaryotic cells tend to be more simpler than eukaryotic. And um, they were actually the first cells on Earth. So I guess like how you can consider um, cell evolution is as going from simple to more complex. And that's really how it started. You started off with organisms like bacteria, and then you slowly evolved into multicellular organisms. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, I guess like evolution of organisms on Earth. Further going on into the characteristics of eukaryotic cells, I have mentioned that they are membrane bound. Um, in both the, the nucleus as well as its other organelles. Um, one thing to also note is that eukaryotic cells doesn't have to be only multicellular like plants and animals. It can also be unicellular, um, whereas prokaryotic are mostly unicellular. So that's just one thing to note. And each of their organelles pretty much perform their own um, biological function. And in this case, um, when you compare how DNA is stored within the, um, within eukaryotic organisms as well as prokaryotic organisms, um, it's pretty much stored within the nucleus, whereas it's stored in the nucleoid over here. So it's important to understand the differences as well as the similarities, um, because you will be um, pretty much asked like a compare question as to how um, you know these structures work. And I've also mentioned that, you know, animals and plants are examples, but fungi is also another example. Prokaryotic cells, like I've mentioned, does not have any membrane-bound organelles. One thing to note is that some prokaryotic organisms, like bacteria, um, have something called plasmids. 
So not only do they have, you know, normal DNA um, that we have, but they also have rings of DNA called plasmids. Um, and some of this genetic material is used as an adaptation to survive. Um, and sometimes these um, bacteria actually grow in a colony and they work together pretty much. They share their resources. Um, and yeah, an example of it is probably like um, biofilm or plaque. So plaque in your teeth forms because you have a film of bacteria that are pretty much working together. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much how um, this works. And some of these adaptations come from plasmids. A few key terms are also written over here. So I have also mentioned what an organelle is. It's pretty much just like structures that help with certain functions within a cell. Um, and membranes is like a thin sheet of tissue. So like a lining, I guess you could say, um, within an organism. And this table pretty much just summarizes the similarities and differences between eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells. You can see here that prokaryotic cells both have DNA, they both have a cell membrane. There's also one thing I forgot to mention, um, even though there's no membrane bound organelles, all of them have a cell membrane. Um, so I guess like that's just that one exception you have to be aware of. Um, and both of them have cytoplasm. So that's pretty much like a liquid that these um, organelles float in, you could say. The difference is, is that prokaryotic tend to be more simple um, and prokaryotic cells have a nucleoid, um, not a nucleus. Um, and obviously the difference not being, um, not having those membrane bound organelles. Moving on to what exactly organelles are, like I said, they do have um, specific functions. And I've mentioned that nucleus stores genetic information. However, there are a bunch of other organelles and let's go through each one of them. Um, within your um, cells, so pretty much like your um, eukaryotic as well as your prokaryotic cells, the common ones that you have um, are things such as a cell membrane, like I mentioned. The cell membrane is really important because it's selective in the sense that it controls what goes in and out of the cell. You don't want certain things to be in excess or to be um, limited either because that can actually hinder certain cell functions. Um, and so that's really important. Um, you will sometimes will also have a cell wall. Um, most prokaryotic organisms do have a cell wall and plants, which are eukaryotic, also have a cell wall. Um, you also have something called vacuoles. Vacuoles are pretty much just vesicles that contain fluid. So if I go back, I can try showing a picture of a vacuole if I find one. Um, I don't think this one has it. Yeah, I don't think we do have pictures of vacuole. But yeah, these pretty much just contain fluid and help with structural support. Some of the other main organisms, not organisms, sorry, organelles you would have um, heard of are things such as the mitochondria. It's known as a powerhouse, the cell. But really what that means is that it produces ATP. ATP is, um... Well, the full name is adenosine triphosphate, um, but all it does is just help produce energy um, for the cell so that, you know, you can continue all these wonderful um, biological processes. You also have things such as the endoplasmic reticulum. Um, these are the sites of protein and lipid synthesis. These are only present within eukaryotes, not prokaryotes. So if I go back, hopefully I can show a picture of the endoplasmic reticulum and you can see over here that you have the endoplasmic reticulum over here there's something called a smooth endoplasmic reticulum and a rough endoplasmic reticulum um the smooth endoplasmic reticulum doesn't contain ribosomes whereas the rough endoplasmic reticulum has ribosomes and ribosomes are very important because these are actually the site of protein synthesis um which is something that you will learn, I think, in year 12. So don't worry about that right now. Um, but yeah, 
Ribosomes are pretty important because literally everything around us is literally made up of protein. Um, so it's a pretty important function. Um, you also have other structural support organelles such as the cytoskeleton. Cytoskeleton um, is a bit weird because it sometimes shows up in prokaryotes um, and shows up in eukaryotes as well. Um, they're just pretty much like string-like structures um, that help with just like stabilizing the cell. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a picture of um, cytoskeletons over here, but yeah, they're just like tubules. They're just like long structures. Um, we also have the garbage disposal of our um, cell, which is the lysosomes. These pretty much just have enzymes that just break down waste. Um, and then um, they just help with removing any byproducts that you don't actually need within the system. You also have um, the Golgi apparatus um, over here. This is the Golgi apparatus. It's very weirdly shaped because it helps to increase surface area. And when you have more surface area, you can actually package more proteins. Um, so that also plays a larger role. Um, you also have chloroplast in plants um, and they contain chlorophyll, which helps photosynthesis. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much the main, I guess, organelle that you have and each of them have different functions. So you can see here that the overall functions include things such as protein synthesis, lipid synthesis, packaging of proteins, um, and things such as like photosynthesis, as well as structural support. So yeah. Um, and adding on to, I mean, this pretty much just summarizes what I've said. Um, but I think I missed two more organelles. Um, we have centrioles and we have cilia and flagella. Centrioles are mainly in cell division. So um, they only pop up in cell division, which I'll talk a bit about later. Um, and cilia and flagella are just like tail-like structures on um, prokaryotes mainly. Um, and they just help um, navigate. Um, sperm cells also have that tail-like structure because they need to navigate as well. So that's also just used for movement for these kinds of cells. 